Hi, my name is Robin Oda, and we're here with the Health and Safety Committee to discuss carbon monoxide uh, detectors. Uh, Brock Heath is on my left, John Chawalker on my right, and let's see, we're here to discuss a recommendation to Council regarding amending the Ordinance Chapter 15 to include provisions related to carbon monoxide alarms in residential rental properties and providing a preventative a penalty, a penalty provision, consideration of emergency legislation is requested. Um, I understand that Chief Simmons is here and you're going to give the presentation or tell us what the program is. Kind of the background is, you know, we work with the law director and the police department and uh, we want to amend it the chapter 15 of the codified ordinance for the uh, fire code. So this would enact, once it's enacted, all rental prop all real property owners who rent to residential tenants of a building or a structure that contains a fuel burning appliance or a building which has an attached garage must equip the building with one or more single station carbon monoxide alarms. Uh, there are some exemptions related to the certain types of sleeping units or dwelling units and I can get into that. But uh, so it would be a property owner is required to supply and install the alarm, ensure that the battery is associated with the alarm is in operating condition. When the, op when the occupant takes possession of the property, provided the occupant with written information regarding the alarm testing and maintenance. The, the occupant is to install any later needed batteries, providing the testing and general maintenance and notify the owner in writing of any deficiencies with the, which the occupant cannot correct. Uh, chapter 15 will also include a penalty section that was inadvertently omitted during a prior update to the fire code. The penalty section is requested to allow the city to enforce the code criminally and to have the Troy Police Department involved when there is no compliance. Uh, the requirement would commence with the effective date of the legislation. So the Troy Fire Department and staff will provide education to the landlord community to effectively implement this requirement and it is requested that this would be emergency legislation okay um, can you go into the exemptions that you mentioned there's not a lot of exemptions the exemptions would be any units that do not have a fuel burning appliance um, I, I think here this afternoon we provided some some more documentation of some of the education materials that we will be presenting to the landlords uh, that's from the Ohio fire marshal's office so it's a um, that's any type of space heaters, be kerosene, um, any type of fuel burning appliance, they would be required to have a carbon monoxide alarm. And this legislation is very consistent with the international code, which usually Ohio adopts. And that's where we're at this point and why it's taken almost a year is we were waiting for the Ohio to adopt the most current version of the international code, which they have not done to this date. So we feel that this is an important issue for the city of Troy to move forward with. Uh, one of the other exceptions would be any unit that would be located two floors above any fuel, fuel burning appliance, which there would be no interconnected ductwork. That is the exceptions. And how would that be enforced? It would be enforced uh, through education. We're going to educate the landlord community. Uh, it'd be no different in 2011 when there was no retroactivity for smoke alarms. We didn't go door to door enforcing our will upon these uh, homeowners or tenants. Um, it's usually by people calling us and asking. Uh, we do have the right to go into multiple units that have a shared common space and we can ensure the compliance with those types of units but any type of duplexes or, or single home residences that are owned by somebody else that they're renting, we don't have the authority to go in there and to enforce that. Uh, what would happen is if that tenant calls the fire department and says, hey, you know, they know or are educated about the ordinance, they can call us and that's what we have done with the smoke detector program. Then we, we get notification to the landlord, hey, you have to provide a working smoke detector to that residence. There isn't a grandfather clause with that. So that was a program that was enacted in 2011 and we didn't have to go after one single landlord. They were all in compliance. Is there any paperwork with that? Any paperwork? Does the landlord have to have paperwork that the renter signs that says, I was shown this, this is in place, it's working, I'm, I'm agreeing that's that this in is the, working? Uh, that's in the, uh, the legislation that we've drawn up. It is in there that says they will provide written documentation that they provided it to the, to the tenant. That's in the legislation. Okay. Matt, if I, if the, uh, 
The facility is all electric. That's an exemption? Yes. So I'm a, land, I'm a landlord who has created an all electric facility and my tenant decides they're going to put a kerosene space heater in there. Is the landlord hung out to dry seriously liable or does somehow this go to the tenant? I would say they're no more liable than if what's written on their lease agreement with that tenant. If they have all electric, you know, I'm not an attorney. I know we got our law director here. And so that would be documentation that they would provide to their own tenant. Um, so landlords would need to have within their agreement, if it's an all electric, if the tenant kind of circumvents the lease, the tenant is then liable for that kerosene or alternative because kerosene gives off a fuel? Correct. And I just want to clarify a little bit with the, the smoke detector law that has been in place since 2011. There have been fires around the state of Ohio where it was found that there was no working smoke detector in that residence. Then it becomes up to the city and then also to a grand jury how deep they want to go with the prosecution of that, that owner. Um, it's, it gets really deep involved and it's like, so with this the intent is to provide the education to the community and to prevent what happened a year ago. There is already multiple states that have this legislation. This wasn't something that we just decided to throw together. So this is actually already code for new construction, uh, whether it be multi-tenants or single-family residential home. The law is in place currently with new construction. Anything else? You can, you can come back to that. Well, I'd asked earlier about the penalty phase, exactly what the penalties might be. The penalty currently would be, if this is passed, it would be it uh, could be fined according to the fire code, which is still a civil process, and that's up to the discretion of the fire department and what kind of violation are we talking about. Is it total negligence? If it's negligence, then we can go to the criminal side, which would be starting out with a minor misdemeanor. But if it's just an education issue where there's, there's no, no, uh, no damages, no loss of life, then it's an education component. We just follow what we do typically with our fire code when we find violations. Yeah, yeah, just have one question, Chief. Uh, I had the exact same question as Mr. Twilliger, and I want to make sure that I understood the answer. So uh, if it's all electric, the tenant brings in a kerosene portable heater on their own, that would require the carbon monoxide requirement? If there's no knowledge of a landlord, and again, mm -hmm. I'm not speaking yeah. from an attorney's perspective, but if a landlord has no knowledge, I don't think that we could go criminally after yeah. or to charge this landlord if the landlord absolutely had no knowledge that this tenant did this. At some point, the tenant has to accept culpability for what they have done to their property once they take that lease agreement. Yeah. And I'm sure the provisions in every lease agreement out there that, hey, when you take this property, you add to this, this apartment to whether it's a heater or something else, you know, I know a lot of leases already have that language built within their lease agreement. But if the landlord has no knowledge of that, then we're not going to go after that <coughs> landlord if there was yeah. some mishap. <coughs> yeah. But these, these carbon monoxide detectors would detect if the kerosene heater was put in. If there was a malfunction in that heater, just yeah. like if there was a gas fireplace, a lot of those gas fireplaces, you know, they, they advertise that they burn efficiently and 100 percent. But if there's a malfunction, anything that burns fuel could produce carbon monoxide. Okay. Thanks, Chief. The only other exception I do want to mention that if it's all electric and there's an attached garage, it would it would require that also because of pulling in a car. So, oh, wow. so, so if they have an attached garage to the residence, then it would require that carbon monoxide detector also. Because most garages that are attached, that's where they they uh, they put common duct work, even if it's not uh, HVAC duct work. Okay. So really the exemption at that point is you've got all electric, the garage is completely separate. If it's in, if the garage is internal inside the house attached, you got to have one. I just want to preface also with, right. since the incident that happened last February, we've installed over 270 carbon monoxide, and that's with the fund that was started with the Troy Foundation and the great community that we have. And we didn't delineate whether people rented or owned. Anybody that called, we provided them a working carbon monoxide detector. So in order to sustain that program, we, we had to draw a line and say, okay, at some point, 
we cannot just give to some of these uh, landlords in the community who own 40, 50 properties. So if they hit us up every couple of years, we wouldn't be able to sustain a great program that's really for the people that need it, can't afford it. Chief, that's all I have. Appreciate okay. it. Um, on this, this form that was handed out, it says, have alarms located on every level of your home. Um, are landlords required to put one on every level? No, if you look, that also says at the least just one. But what sleeping. is the city wanting to require? Just one. Just one. Just one working smoke, one carbon monoxide detector. That's the minimum requirements required by the, the international code, and that's what we require also. And further down in that paragraph, it says if the alarm will not reset, who's responsible for having it reset? That's in the legislation to it be the property owner. Any other? Nope. Bobby? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chief, for uh, taking this on because it's a really critical safety issue for a lot of folks who just don't understand sure. uh, a hidden danger. Um, why not? Um, are we going to mail just to identified uh, property owners that are renting? No, this would actually, the flyer would go out to the database that we have for all the, the registered land landlords in the city of Troy. Okay, and why wouldn't we want to cover necessarily every residence in the city? We have been. Um, you know, I don't know if you saw the annual report, but we went out to almost 7,000 different people, and we used to only give fire safety education. Uh, you know, so this year we really, everywhere we went, every presentation we gave, we incorporated the carbon monoxide, the issues of the hazards, mitigation, different things to prevent it, signs and symptoms of so we will continue to do that. It will be on our website and everywhere we go. Even when we go on medic calls, we're still educating the community on, on these. So we, what can, if, we can, you know, I anticipate we'll do a press release um, and then we'll hit the community with that and we'll also. How do we, um, how does it come to our attention? Uh, say I own a single family residence in town and uh, buy another one. Uh, and rent it out. How does it come to anybody's attention that uh, some potential new property owner that decides to rent uh, comes into the database or, or comes to our attention? How would we know? It's, it's very similar to the smoke detector program that we currently, we, we've had in place for a long while. And after that 2011 code that, that there was no retroactivity for any grandfather clause, um, we, we are mandated by the state of Ohio for any type of metro housing to go out and we have to complete a fire inspection. We, we completed uh, several hundred home inspections last year by mandate. So in their paperwork, they require us to make sure there's a working smoke detector. So this gives us that accessibility now also that, hey, we have this. It's an education component. This is not to, to go out and ensure that, you know, we, we go out and and hammer every landlord, it's a, it's a good idea. And the cost is, is not astronomical. I think, you know, on average, a landlord can, you know, if he's got two rental spaces for $50, he can outfit both of those with a working carbon monoxide detector. And they already have to have a smoke detector, so the cost comes down if you're just doing a combo unit. So it's, it's really through education, as many avenues as we can. We, we do, uh, we have that access. We had a fire today when we, when we reach that avenue of the median you know, people see the newspapers, people see the news. So I believe with a edu good education component, hitting that database of the landlords, we'll be able to do a, a big net for the community to, to advise them of the current legislation that's being proposed and also ways to, to get the working carbon monoxide detectors, but also the precautions to, to, to prevent it. I mean, that's a big issue also. Is there, a, along the same line, but going off of the event of last February, um, is there is there any require is there any possibility of a requirement of an annual inspection of rental properties that the property owner must uh, comply with of of heating units and other things uh, like that? That to my knowledge, there's currently you know there, there's amendment rights for every 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 person. Uh, there are certain things that we don't have the access to require unless we did pass an ordinance to do that. I think, again, with good community education programs, which we have National Night Out where we reach, you know, thousands. Uh, so and that's not even counted in those 7,000 people. We don't say, okay, hey, we reached 15,000 or we're at the Strawberry Festival. That's actually people in our lectures. So 
we hit a broader base in the city of Troy each year. So through the education efforts, there is not to my knowledge for, I think some of the metro housing, the different people who get subsidized housing, there's some uh, enforceable things on the metro side for different types of inspections. But as far as the fire department, we don't and we cannot enforce that. Okay. Um, uh, there were a couple other questions that you previously answered. Uh, but uh, how many uh, property owners that are renting currently are in our database? Do you know a number on that? I do not have the number for that. Thank you. That's all I have. Madam Chair, just to follow up with your one of your questions, um, how do we know when new property owners or new, new landlords come in? Uh, we do have a uh, utility registration program. Uh, we did that several years ago now and so that's the database that that Matt will tap into and that gets continually updated as people come in and sign in for or sign up for new service and shut off old service um, as far as a uh, an inspection program that's a pretty hot topic um, pardon the pun but um, that it, we could do a comprehensive program but that is a very involved um, not inexpensive and again it's comprehensive so it would go well beyond just uh, detectors of any type well thanks for that <clears throat> thanks for clarifying that because that's really where I was going with that question uh, so if uh, John Q Smith is a property owner and Sally Smith uh, Jones comes in to uh, apply for the water or whatever service that we provide with a different name that would trigger uh, a question about r a rental situation or something like that that's correct we have a a, a rental survey uh, our, our landlord survey that that we require be filled out got it thank you anybody else in the audience <clears throat> Good. Thank you. You're welcome. And we are requesting emergency legislation again. <clears throat> you know, we we took we took time. We wanted to see what the state was doing, but now that we're ready to do this, uh, we'd like to get it in as quickly as possible. So there's no window of time where the 30 days is going and everybody's in agreement, but it's just waiting for the legislative process. I'm going to take a bit of a dissenting um, opinion on this. Um, I really, rather than enacting legislation, would like to emphasize an agreement between a renter and their landlord that let the two of them work this out. Who's going to be paying for this? Uh, I think we're all should be responsible for our own safety and it seems like legislating and forcing people to do that you kind of take the personal responsibility out of it there's a lot of it, it just seems to me there's a lot of things that have to come involved there's a lot of testing and checking the houses and uh, renters calling and complaining about the landlord and saying, you know, they didn't provide this. And I'm not sure legislating a rule like this is the way to do it. Um, I think it should be between the landlord and the renter deciding who's going to provide it. Um, well, ultimately, ultimately, they have the right to do that. It can be in any rental agreement. Um, however, much like the smoke detectors um, and the fact that there's a landlord-tenant arrangement, and not it's not your personal property, or, you know, you're not the king of the king of the castle legislation. Uh, this is Ohio has, um, which limits our ability to uh, dictate to property owners who own their and, and live reside in that that particular property this is a little different and it's really no different than uh, as Matt mentioned earlier uh, that we did with the smoke detector and and basically everybody in the Miami Valley and across the state did 
um, um, I would probably tend to agree with you a little bit more, Mrs. Oda, if um, we were going to institute mandatory inspections uh, and we were going to go in 30 days later and make sure that everybody has one, um, you know, and, and basically just be very dictatorial about it. Um, the way we did it with the smoke detector went very well. We are emphasizing uh, life safety and prevention, um, but to do that in the 1% uh, of the 1% of the landlords that may not want to comply, uh, deliberately not comply, uh, then that's where this kind of legislation, and really virtually all legislation, let's be honest, uh, comes, comes into play and is necessary. Wouldn't it be incumbent then on the renter to say, I care about my <clears throat> safety and I'll put that in? Um, you would like to think that, but um, it's not always the case. And so if, you know, if we want to protect those that are actually residing in the property, um, then this is a safeguard to hold the, the landlord uh, accountable because it is their property. They are in a business relationship and so the responsibility um, really should stay with the landlord. Uh, again, if the landlord and the tenant want to work out that arrangement, that's really the agreement between the two of them. However, for us to, to make sure that there are these life safety devices in the house, that's that's the legal arrangement that we are allowed to uh, to make if, if I may add if we do nothing the city of Troy has that option you guys you know being council you have that that option if there is already an ordinance that says that we will adopt the most current Ohio co fire code version uh, this legislation is what Ohio is going to adopt it's just a matter of when so that's why we it took us a while to work with our you know, our all director and say, hey, this is the, this is what other states have done. This is what we want to do because this, if we do adopt the most current fire code, this would be, this is the same legislation that would be coming. There would be no required legislation on your guys' part. Um, so that is consistent exactly with the code. It's going to be adopted at some point. When you call to the state, they just said, hey, we're not there yet. And they've been saying that for several months, but it could be voted in and adopted as, as soon as, you know, March, April, sometime this year. So that's just where we're at. And that, that language is, is verbatim for the International Code. Sure. And I understand. I'm in, the, I'm in the minority on that. I just think more legislation is the last thing we need, having to follow up on it and creating enforcement just creates all kinds of new issues. So... I will take it dissenting, even though, even statewide, federally, maybe I'm in the minority. That's okay. Thank you. I think uh, just to make sure I heard it right, the landlords are responsible for putting it in, making sure it's working when they move in. But after that, the renters have to test it, change batteries, and it's their responsibility at that point. Correct. And if there's a malfunction, they would, uh, it's in the legislation, they would make that aware to the landlord and be their responsibility. It's, it's actually most of these are installed they're hardwired and or they're put in a place that is part of the part of the structure so it's not the kind that you plug in and so people could mess with and actually when a renter leaves they couldn't take it with us and that's it's some of the same type of legislation that has been passed and enacted with the smoke detector program. so are are you wanting to legislate the exact kind no. i mean we have a carbon monoxide detector at our house and it's a plug-in so it could somebody could walk off with it. I'm just giving you the general practice for smoke detector that landlords put in. They do the types that the, the tenants don't have that good accessibility to damage or to take with them if they decide to leave. So it is usually part of the structure. So. I would the issue of of an individual's rights <coughs> legislating this or the you know, a variety of different things. I respect that, but I would also want our community to be proactive so that we do not have issues similar to that over by Lincoln Center a year ago, a tragic event like that with the loss of life and the stigma 
and that's probably the wrong word, but the image that it might give for our community as kind of a sit back and not be involved, not pay attention to a tragedy like that. Um, in hurricane areas, you have rules about safety straps on foundations and ro roofs. Um, we have a variety of other things that I think are relatively neutral, but proactive enough to make it worth the protection of our citizens. So I would be for moving forward with it. Move forward with the emergency. Thank you. Thank you. If that's it, dismissed. Great.